Hey everyone, I'm Joel with Dissecting DIY, and we have gone solar with Tesla Energy. I'm going to break it down, what it took to actually get them out here, especially during the pandemic. Uh, they did shut down for a little bit, and that, I thought, was going to do us in, in terms of being able to get this project done. However, things didn't end up working out, and uh, we're going to go over some of their competitors. I'm actually one of their competitors in the area. We are in the New Hampshire area. We'll go over some of that. We have 16 panels on the back here that you see. Another five on the front, giving us a total of 21 panels. I'll tell you what kind of energy output we're getting, um, some differences in uh, sunny days versus cloudy days, and partly cloudy days. Uh, for some reason, we're doing a little bit better. Most of the stuff has been uh, installed on the side of the house, whether they be breaker boxes, uh, shutoffs. Most of that stuff is on the outside. And then, of course, there's the inverter, which they put inside. That's about it, and let's go over it and into the breakdown. All right, this is the side view. We have a primary shutoff here, the emergency disconnect service equipment, and of course the breaker panel for um, the, the whole solar system. Um, so here I have breakers for my power walls, one, two, and three. And then here's the breaker for the solar system itself. The main shut off. Um, this is in case the fire department or anyone needs to shut off the service from the photovoltaic cells or the solar equipment. That way, no one gets shocked uh, having to work on it or do anything. And then, of course, this is the new box itself. This one's a little bit more buttoned up. And of course, that's the primary uh, service disconnect as well. So, <clears throat> some pros is I did have a generator hookup. If there's ever a prolonged period of time, especially in the winter, uh, I'm still able to use this. I just can't use it to actually tie into the system. So this remains separate. I have a switch box inside that I'm still able to use if I needed to use a generator. So that was a plus. The downside is, is that I'm not going to be able to use the generator to charge the power walls. As a matter of fact, they told me if I tried to do that, um, that could void warranties. And we're not going to do that. It would work very well with a Generac. A system like that but it just doesn't work in this case where this is just a you know generator that I kind of wheel around and it gets a lot of dirty power so we're not able to do that that's one of the setbacks with the system but not a big deal nonetheless all right so in this breakdown of me looking for solar I'm just gonna go over three companies I was trying to get three bids from three installers one of them being so it was Tesla Revision Energy and SunPower. Unfortunately, SunPower didn't have any authorized installers in the area. They were really uh, the company that I was really pushing to get to their own. own they kind of sabotaged themselves because they didn't have any installers in the area, and it's really, it's really a bummer because they lost out on on potential business because they didn't have installers. So, but that's okay. So I I ended up going with Tesla, Revision Energy, and then Solar Wholesale, which is a DIY. Uh, pretty neat site, but it was just something that was outside of my uh, scope of being able to handle, especially with two kids and being a stay-at-home dad. So let's just get into this breakdown, and hopefully you will come out a little bit more knowledgeable going into shopping for solar for yourself. Now this is the roof space that you just saw from Google Maps. Now this is the space that we were going to put solar on. You know, I, I kind of really liked all the sunshine I was able to get here and here and of course there's the, the amount of time of day and I knew kind of knew going into it that this space right here wasn't it wasn't going to be used because it's considered a flat roof and Tesla for some other reason they just don't like installing on them one of the things looking for solar that I wanted was I wanted a battery system and a solar a solar array that could charge it that is one of the things that I was looking for I wanted an ability you know I do have a generator generators are, are problematic as every time that I do need them they tend to need a lot of maintenance around the time that I need them even if I keep up with maintenance I'm still fighting with them carburetor cleaner I just got sick of that and I if I was gonna get a standby system I didn't want something that I was constantly gonna be maintaining and then I, I didn't want to be competing for, you know, paying gasoline prices or having gas pumped in, propane, things like that for a Generac. So I wanted an ability to have a battery system that I could recharge and heaven forbid the grid ever went down that I'd be able to use it. And then as a backup, use the generator that's problematic. <laughs> that is, a, you know, the last resort. Another thing that I was looking for uh, was a cost from a professional, which I brought up earlier. 
worth doing it myself. This is where I really wanted to look into uh, was it worth doing it myself or just paying the extra and let it, you know, just put a little bit, um, turn, a different turnaround times in terms of payoff um, or where I start getting paid back. Uh, pricing was a huge factor. How much is it going to cost to install? How much for the batteries? Uh, these are things that I was really focusing on. If the price wasn't right, I was not going to go solar at all. And then off-grid capability. Now, one of the things that frustrates me about just a solar array is solar to me does not make sense unless if the power goes out, I need to be able to power my home. I, I want the ability to go off-grid. Heaven forbid the grid were to go down or anything like that. I want an ability to be self-sustaining, self-sufficient. I may not be able to power my home all of the day, but I'd rather power it some of the day where I can get water, um, you know, get power to my refrigerator, things like that. Uh, those are the things that were important to me. And because I'm on a well, that's why I say water. A lot of people probably from the city or who are on a well, uh, if you're on a well, you need uh, an ability to power that. Otherwise, you don't have water. It's not like a town supply where you just turn on the faucet and that pressure's there. There was roof preparations to consider. Now, before I even went into this project, I had been preparing my roof for solar for quite some time. I had reinforced it. I had checked every rafter, every beam. I had taken pictures and addressed any issues. We put a new roof on about two years ago. That's what I mean by, you know, consider roof preparation and repairs. You really have to go over that roof and make sure, especially with if one of my other videos, you see a, a Dr. Energy Saver Silver Glow, if you're gonna be covering that attic space, whether it be sheetrock or a foam, that you've addressed all the rafters and you know what is gonna be there uh, or, or what's under there holding everything up. And I had, you know, we didn't have enough collar ties, so I added collar ties. I mean, I made sure that that attic space was going to be sufficient. Now here, uh, this is the Tesla website. Now you can see, this is actually a 36 panel array. These, this picture here, is, that's 36 panels right there. That is a lot. And I thought I would be able to get 36 panels, but um, not even close. So then of course they give you a breakdown over here. This is what it was recommending for my property is a 12.24 kilowatt system with three power walls. This is a little bit different from when I actually, I actually started this project or working on getting this back in January. And there was a little bit of a different setup that they've, th this is improved. The one that I saw was, I, I didn't really like it to be honest. And this is, this is better. You just put in your address and then of course you put in the rest of your information, then you're good to go. Now the solar panel that they use, I uh, wasn't really a fan of 315 Watts. It's got a 19.6 panel efficiency, which they don't show here. Um, it's a black panel. It's a decent panel. This is a QLED 315 watt panel. They are good panels. They are premium panels, but they're just under that, that scope of watt wattage generation. Your roof is prime real estate. And you need to fit every every panel that you can up there with a maximum wattage. I really think Tesla being the company that it is, they've kind of put all their eggs in one basket with the solar roof. And they've kind of let the solar panel side of things slide a little bit. I mean, they have things squared away where they want it to be, where they figured this could hold things over for a while, in my opinion. This is the, this is the thing that I don't like is 315 watts. They should be at a 350 plus in terms of wattage on their panel. And this is where... I was kind of shying away from Tesla because they're considered a premium company, but at the same time, their ah, their panel here just isn't up to what I wanted. It, it Again, it is a good panel, but it's not like the SunPower XAE series. They, they, there's just no competition with that panel. Of course, there's other competitors like Rec LG, which we'll get into later. Now, this is the design. Now, this was so frustrating. So let's let's go back up a bit. What happens once you pay your $100 fee? So you have to pay a $100 fee just to get Tesla to even talk to you about putting solar or to, to get the design started. Not like other companies. You're going to go around. You're going to take pictures of everything. You're going to take a picture of your panel. You're going to take a picture of the, you know, the service coming in the 200 amps, 100 amps, whatever it is. You're going to take a picture of your meter, where you want your power walls. You're basically going to do everything that a site survey crew would do. You're gonna have the information of your, the roof space and they're gonna see what they can you know, install. Based, everything's automated based on what they can get from an aerial view. Now, once this process was started, it took some time for them to actually get back to me. And this was before uh, COVID-19 was really 
stressing everybody out. This is the original system size they wanted to put in, but again, we lost, I'm sorry, I said six earlier, uh, we lost those four panels and that was a bummer. So one of the things I wanted them to do is right here, I said, okay, let's, let's take a look at this because there's other companies I've already had out. I said, I want you to rearrange these panels so we can try to fit more panels in this, you know, they're putting, the other company had like a Rec 365, which is a larger panel. And they had three rows of these things up and down. And they were able to fit 23 panels on the back of this thing. And I said, I, I really want you to take a look at that. Getting them to redesign everything was like pulling teeth. They, they didn't do it. Uh, they, they, really, they didn't do it until the very end. And then all they did is they moved. They, they gave me my redesign where they took this panel off and they added one more here. And actually in the original Solar City design, they actually have the panels where it's one, two, three, four, five, and then six. That was from back in 2016 when I consulted Solar City. It just didn't make sense then. I didn't understand because as the day drives on, the sun comes across, so I'll get tree shading here, and the sun actually comes down like this. And this is where I get a majority of my sun. I asked them to do it several times, and they didn't do it. it eventually, you know, it got to the point where they said, you know, don't worry about it. And then, of course, I had to worry about it come install day where I'm looking at, you know, they're like, oh, this is the setup. And I'm just like, I'm like, whatever. I'm like, just install it, <laughs> you know, and uh, and they did. So that was pretty aggravating with me. I was actually really ticked. I wish I could get them to come back out and actually do that. But again, remember, Solar City had this set up with three rows of panels. Huh? They didn't do that. They, they went for this design in the back and then they switched it up in the front. I, I would have, A, I would have liked all these panels to be heading one way and then, the, you know, basically it to be uniform because Tesla is all about uniformity and the, them, them looking nice and this and that. And I understand that, but they didn't do that here. And that was, that was disappointing. I did get three power walls. Quote was pretty good. So remember, I keep talking battery here. Let's go into the battery. So, so that was my frustration with Tesla. Uh, let me back up. That was my frustration is that the, the redesign was terrible. Getting them to change anything was terrible. Getting to do comparison was terrible. You have this one portal here and this is it. it the, this is the design. If you want them to go back, there aren't like tabs where you can compare designs and do a side by side comparison of, you know, maybe I want three power walls or what about one power wall? What's the cost? What's this? There wasn't an easy way to do that. It was like pulling teeth. And that's something Tesla, I think, needs to change is if someone's going into solo, they, they need to change that. And another thing is the effort needed to be put in here with this here. I, I really think I could have got more panels on, on my roof. There's a big gap here and a big gap here. And then there's this huge gap here where I really think they could have got another row of panels. in. You know, unfortunately, this right here is my vent stack for my plumbing. I needed that. I was going to move that to the front, but after talking to a plumber, he's like, yeah, you're going to have a 90 and a 90. You really want to straight down. You know, he goes, obviously you can do anything you want, but you're going to run into problems down the road. So he, he just advised against it. So we left it there. I could have got two more panels. It would have been 18 in the back. You know, that was really frustrating with Tesla. That was one of the most frustrating things that I've ever had to deal with was just getting them to change anything. Getting, I had to stay on top of them constantly to change things and after spending a hundred dollars i don't feel like that's something i should have had to do and that's the only feedback i can give to tesla hopefully they improve upon it so power walls i love power walls power walls a battery system especially with the energy density that uh, the batteries have now i love this idea of basically being able to go off grid at night if, if i don't want to have to utilize the grid i, I can but uh, at the same time, I don't have to. So what can you do? Well, all of this stuff, I, you know, I can do the dishes, I can vacuum, dry your clothes, wash your clothes. I mean, and of course, the more efficient you are with any of these things, the longer your battery's gonna last. So they said that I could do all these things and last one day and 23 hours. Now, I ran five different air conditioners. I went, I came downstairs, I do some gaming at night. That pulls quite a bit. I'm using about 2.5, three kilowatts consistently for the night. And by the time around 2 a.m. from about 3.30 p.m. was when I, I dropped to about 43% energy, which is a lot. And then of course, once everything else was shut down, I was pulling about 1.3 to 1.5 kilowatts between the air conditioners. That fluctuates between, you know, 600, watts to 1.2 kilowatts or 
that would have probably lasted me the rest of the night. I probably only would have dropped another, you know, 10, 15%. But you're probably noticing something is I'm not going to last that one day in 23 hours. So clearly I'm either pulling more or they've overestimated how much I'm actually going to be able to. It'd be nice if they had like a kilowatt at one kilowatt, you'll last this many days, you know, at a one kilowatt pull, you'll last this long. And at, you know, a two kilowatt, you know, if they did something like that. That would be easier to gauge. But this is just kind of like kind of selling it, overselling it, in my opinion. Again, my wife's able to cook on the stove with three power walls which I find amazing. Like there's some times where it will go to like seven kilowatts uh, where it has to pull from the grid, but uh, not often. So that's what you can do with the power wall. Pricing, oh, the pricing is beautiful. This is this is one of the things that, that sold me on this and, and you're gonna see why in a second. So this isn't the original size. They actually dropped the price here. So 18,000 just for solar panels. That's around where it should be. I think they should have better panels for that price, but you know, you know wishes being what they are so and then there's the three power walls which this is steep i mean you can get a generac system but what really so we get the hundred dollar deposit which they take off tax and installation cost is included that's amazing and then there's this the bundling oh my god i love bundling after this so 7100 uh bundling discount that was amazing and that is what that is what got me to buy it if it, if it had stayed this I never would have taken the plunge, but this right here made it made, make sense. And then of course, the total amount due is, is still pretty steep. That's a lot of money. But then there's the federal tax credit. Now there's something that I need to bring up about federal tax credits. If you are not taxed the amount that, that they're gonna give, give you a credit for, you will not see that back. You will only get a maximum. So if you're taxed say $10,000 and you normally get 5,000 back, well you only see an additional 5,000. You get the maximum. But I mean, if you're normally getting 5,000 back, and then, you know, you got to make sure that you're allotting the money because the loan companies treat it like you get a check in the mail. And that's what a lot of people think. I'm going to get a check in the mail for the full amount. No, it's whatever. So if you make 5000 that you were taxed 5000 in a given year, that's the maximum you'll, you will get back is 5000 on that rebate check. You got to make sure that the payment goes directly to the loan company because if you don't, after 18 months, well, you're going to pay a higher price and that's going to get you in the long run especially if it's a 20-year loan you have to pay off basically that federal tax credit within 18 months otherwise the loan amount goes up so be aware of that it's not a trick it's it's how they i mean i guess it is but it's how they get you in you know you have to be aware that as long as you stick to those parameters of paying it within that 18 months and you get that nine ninety one hundred paid off you'll be sitting pretty at the lower amount here as opposed to the higher amount here. So pros and cons, cost is great, looks great. Direct manufacturer of the power wall. You're dealing with the people that actually manufacture this thing. If you have any problems, they'll be able to pump another one out. Bundling discounts make this a no brainer. And then of course, access to the Tesla referral code, which can help pay down your, your panels a little bit quicker. That was another reason they install fast. They installed about a day and the access to the Tesla app for control over the system. Cons, we went over the cons, slow turnaround response time from the sales design staff, you know, not being able to get designs that you want. And then there's that portal that was just terrible. Multiple designs erase the last one. No way to compare unless you're taking screenshots and staying on top of it. If you didn't get those screenshots, You've lost that design unless they put it back up and you got to keep bugging the sales rep for that that redesign and to put it back into the portal. Once contract is signed, the design portal disappears so that all those things that you saw, the, the offers and all that goes away. There's no way to go back to it and kind of reference what you had. So take screen caps if you're, if you're doing this. Contact preference is largely ignored. So they're going to ask you, do you want to communicate phone, text, email? Totally ignore that. They they tried contacting me via email. I said, this isn't going to fly. I'm, I was actually doing the flag project at this time. I said, I'm dealing with epoxy. I have a headset. I need to be able to talk to you. I I need to talk and work. You know, they, they weren't, they just kept emailing me, even though I kind of really drove this point home. Uh, solar panel is on the low end of power generation. It is a premium panel. It is a good panel. However, it's 315 watts. You know, again, your roof is prime real estate for that power generation. You need, I think Tesla needs to be at the, up at 350, 400 watt panels. The problem is, is affordability. You know, I can wish all I want for that affordability, unless the, they're able to get the panels at a good price. Might not happen. Uh, and they're not going to give those things away. So this is nitpicky stuff. So no way to locally switch power or backup mode. So I wish there was a little like screen 
on either the power walls themselves or on the, the switch that allowed me to do everything I needed to do in the app to switch between modes, whether it's backup only. I, I just wish there was a control panel because once their network goes down, I mean, it happened to me a couple of times, you are kicked out of that. It's like you don't even own any anything from Tesla. And that's a problem. Those are the pros and cons of Tesla. Uh, you can see the link up in the up in the screen here, uh, www.tesla.com or just tesla.com. If you want to go check things out for yourself, feel free to do so. Uh, I'm going to have my referral code down in the description. I'm going to bring this up several times. If you're going to go with Tesla, feel free to give that link a click and use my referral code. Uh, it helps me. It helps the channel. It helps me do more green projects that I want to do, especially with that roof. You know, we are planning to someday take that roof off and add more panels, and that would allow me to go greener. All right, so this is Revision Energy. So I called SunPower originally to get a quote from them. They sent someone out to the home, which was Revision Energy, and they said, you know, we don't, I, I don't know why they called you and told us, told you that we could do that install because we don't actually offer their panels. So that was a bummer, but we went ahead with the process anyways. And the ones that they were really kind of boasting about was the REC 325 and the REC 360. So those panels, they, they went over you. I can actually see the portal here is really nice. I'll go over that more in a second, but um, let's go back to the, the sales process. They were punctual and on time. There was a two man crew. One guy went up on the roof, took all the measurements, photographs, and pictures needed. And then the salesman who was talking to me, was it wasn't really pushy. He kind of came out and just said, hey, what do you want this system to do? And I said, you know, I want to, you know, ideally I would like it to power my home completely throughout the year where I'm actually putting more back to grid than I'm actually taking. 8,400 and was my annual production and uh, you'll see that in the next screen they were expecting me to produce at 29 panels so he he went and designed a system for me based on both and that's what i liked is i, I had two separate options so he listened he was attentive and he made sure that he was there for me working for me and that made me feel i thought that day that i was going to go with this company i thought this is it like i don't i don't see me going with anyone else not tesla not not the diy site so you know the more that we talked he he then showed me this graph you know and this was very informative he goes look with a 29 panel setup at uh 325 watts uh you're going to be able to produce 110 percent of you know your this is going to be your approximate energy production. So I was a little, a little bit above what I was uh, consuming, and I liked that. But I, you know, I said, but wait, you know, the 29 panels. I know we're not going to be able to use that, so let's go down to the, the just the 23. And he said, okay, at that you'll be able to produce. Uh, I think he said about 85 percent. Okay, well that's not ideal. So he came out with the system cost. I said, what is the system going to cost? System cost at 85% uh, production. He said, okay, well, the REC 325 at the uh, 29 panel, that's going to be somewhere around $34,000, $36,000. He goes, well, don't worry. There's, there's a federal tax credit. It's going to bring that price way down. I, I don't like the federal tax credit. I've, I've already gone over that. Um, it's my basically, if you're not taxed that, that much, you're never going to see that money back, and you already get so much back. So say you get two, three thousand back from Uncle Sam, and you're actually taxed that whole year, you know, ninety one hundred dollars. Well, that's all you get back. So if you've allotted that for an emergency, or you know, you like to save, or anything else like that, you're gonna have to pump that all into the loan because if you don't, within eighteen months, that loan's gonna go up. You know, unfortunate, but that is the case. They did a state rebate. Uh, well, the state does a rebate, and then of course there is the solar salute, which no one else that I had interviewed. Or, or had out for bids did. So I really appreciate any time a company can do something for veterans. Uh, I never expect it, but any time that it's done, um, I'm very thankful for it, no matter what the price, because it brings my price down that little bit more and hopefully would bring the project a little bit more into the scope of my budget. So the net cost after all that, he said, would have been around $24,000, but even this for panels is still a little on the high side for me. $200 uh, payment, of course, the cash options, uh, are available. So then I said, okay, uh, if we're going to spend this kind of money and, you know, with the tax rebate, what about the REC 360? He goes, okay, this is the REC 360. You're going to be able to produce 122% of your power. Um, your annual production will be 9,900. 9, I said, okay, hang on. Remember the 29 panel thing. Let's go down to the, the 23. He said, yep, I've, I've already, he already had it done. He goes, 
that you'll be able to produce about 103% of your uh, power needs. And I said, that's great. That's, that's what I'm looking at. I go, let's go with the 360. He said, okay. So then, you know, I got the, the cost here and this just, again, it just completely priced me out. I really feel like some of these companies just really um, rely on the federal tax credit and either they, they don't get competitive because of it, they have no incentive to be competitive and they have no incentive to look at their prices. This just priced me out. I never, ever, as a consumer, look at the federal tax credit. I always assume I'm never, ever going to see it. And I always look at this price. But, of course, they were telling me, you know, after all is said and done, you're looking at 30, 31,000. And for, you know, cost per watt, he broke it down cost per watt, which is, he's right. You know, um, it, it is, it actually is pretty decent uh, considering, you know, what I'm getting for, for wattage and, you know. That it just being what it was, it it just priced me out. And then I wanted the Powerwall. The, the Powerwall is a make or break it. Remember, I've always said it is pointless to get a solar system unless you can have a battery. That's that's my opinion. That's what I like. That is what I personally am looking for. So then I, I said, okay, what about the battery? And then he said, aha, well, the battery is going to cost you about 14000 he said. But then, of course, you know, he's like, I'm not sure, you know, we'll get the price to you. And then, of course, he did. But uh, remember what Tesla was offering it for. It's, 24,000, I got $7,100 off. I got three of them for about this price. And he wanted to charge me, or, or Revision wanted to charge me just $19,000 for one of these things. I mean, 5,000, that, that thing has, it's what, 5,000 kilowatts? Uh, and then you stack them, you get 15,000 um, kilowatt. Uh, it's, it's just one of the things, I just couldn't see it. I couldn't see it at all. I, I couldn't see spending that kind of money. And then once once I saw this, you know, I, I did end up speaking to the guy. I was like, hey, man, this, is there any, like, wiggle room on the price here? Like, is there, is this, like, your traditional sales pitch? And he's like, no, man, the, the prices really are what they are. He's like, I'm really sorry. And I said, well, I had Tesla come out, and they've gotten me a quote. And I said, they've really blown you guys out of the water. I, I said, by a lot. And he said, hey, you know, do you mind if I ask, what did they quote you? And I said, oh, you know, all right, yeah, yeah. I said, uh, you know, I told him, and he goes, look, he goes, we can't compete with that. He goes, Tesla does this thing where they really, you know, we really can't compete with them at these prices. You know, they're the manufacturer of the Powerwall. You know, once we get it, there's, you know, typically a markup. And I understand that. Uh, you know, there's going to be a markup on stuff. There's, you know, anytime you see a company like Revision, that you see they have commercials, the ads, the banners, and all that stuff, the, the, they're on Facebook and this and that. Guys, that all costs money, and anytime I see someone advertising like that instead of word of mouth, I know that I'm going to be paying a premium just to pay for the sales and marketing. On top of that, just paying for the sales staff and all that. There is a reason for the cost, and unfortunately, these companies have to get more efficient. Tesla was able to get really efficient by bringing everything under one roof and really downsizing um, their sales staff. And they, what they've done is highly intelligent. However, they're still working out the kinks. But they're getting better at it. Uh, you remember the portal I showed earlier? You know, it had improved from the time that, you know, the three months that I had looked at it. So they are getting better, especially with COVID-19 uh, hitting everybody. I really feel bad for everybody. Hopefully someday, if I ever hit the lottery, <laughs> I can do business with them and get that higher wattage panel. You know, you can't just be efficient with electricity, but, you know, what you consume. Revision Energy. Um, the pros, multiple panels to choose from. Really love that. Uh, Waterage and efficiency rates. The REC 325 was about a 19.5 conversion efficiency. And I believe the uh, REC 365 had a 20.9. The QLED one from Tesla has about a 19.6 conversion efficiency, if I didn't already mention that. Uh, design portal was great. Side-by-side -side comparisons. I didn't have to... I didn't have to constantly harass my sales rep to, to get me updates and that was nice the sales team arrives on uh, at the home on time very punctual very professional and very to the point very poignant the guy went up on the roof measured everything got all that uh, no fee to get the process moving was incredible and then of course they have a 25 year production warranty similar to what tesla has let, let me go over the cons and i'll go over a little disclaimer here uh cost of their solar install was way too high cost of the power wall was way too high uh, solar company uses the tax incentive a little bit too heavily, especially considering they're going away in 2022. I don't know how they're going to be able to actually stay in business or stay competitive without that because those prices were just ridiculous. So the uh, solar company uses the tax incentive when, uh, you know, you may never ever see the, the full 
uh, amount of that tax is coming back to you. And this is why I kind of shy away from that. So this is used to justify paying the higher price. So additional pros or cons may have been present, but because of the high prices and all that stuff, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't go forward any anymore. And I'm sure that there were probably more pros and cons, but because I wasn't privy to them, I cannot advise you further on Revision Energy. Guys, if you like what you saw with Revision Energy, Go stop by their website. Have a, have a rep out to your home. Again, they're they're cool. They're professional. They're easy to talk to. Really love the sales uh, sales staff. Go to revisionenergy.com and check into solar with them today. Let's move on to the next side for the DIY portion of the video. All right, now this is Solar Wholesale. I did reach out to Solar Wholesale. I did try getting some information from them. I actually learned about. I watch a guy on YouTube, Jerry Rig Everything, and he went through this company, you know, and he showed, you know, like the the instructions and everything and they they looked really great they look like a great company so i looked into them i really like that they did a as you can see here they can do a roof mount or a ground mount most other companies like revision and tesla won't even touch any of that they they won't go with the ground mount um, system anytime a company here is undergrounds whether it's verizon at&t xfinity comcast whatever the company is they they run for the hills and that's true for everybody it, there's just it just gets really complicated you know once you start going underground if you hit something you know it's on you to repair it can get expensive so i can see why but this company it's all on you to get it installed it is a, a full you're going to do everything diy the they do a permit and design so what they're going to do is they're going to design your whole system they're going to do everything like tesla does where you're going to take a picture of everything they're, they're going to basically design a, a solar system for you everything for the permit phase you know i'm pretty sure you're going to pay a fee for all all that kind of work that part i believe was about 500 bucks so then once that's all done if you buy the equipment great you save a, a great deal amount of money now as i said i did reach out to this company and i did try getting a hold of them but you know they said you know i'll contact the sales staff you know a lot of us are working from home due to covid and i was understanding of that but they never got back to me and one of the biggest drawbacks to this is I don't know what, what components they're using. I don't know what brands they're using. I don't know what panels they're using. I mean, I could go down a list of all this stuff and I just really wish that they didn't go with a traditional like revision in Tesla. Tesla at least shows the type of panel they use. You know, just a full list of, of what products they use. I don't think if they gave that information away that someone would be able to design a system the way they do around it or want to deal with the hassle of basically, you know, shopping for parts. And even if they did, you know, so what? It's it's out of their hands. They're not going to have to troubleshoot it. That was a, a big drawback with them. And then, of course, never getting back to me. Uh, I remember talking to my wife, let's try to go the DIY route instead of spending all this money, you know, we were kind of looking at how to do it. And I started researching how to do it. She goes, I just want someone, you know, we just put a new roof on. We're going to go with, you know, some someone that does it professionally. So, you know, that was her call. And based on my schedule, I mean, I maybe have a day a week that I can actually work on something. And the, the crew that installed Tesla was here for a day. So imagine how long it would have taken me. So the pros, professional design your system, comes with instructions, hopefully better than Ikea, multiple inverter options, instructions specific to your uh, to your system in your home, uh, video educating you on their method versus professional install, roof and ground systems available. No information on the range of products on the website, really disappointing. You must submit email to have sales rep contact you with any information. This is a traditional uh, sales approach which uh, sometimes can act as a barrier to actually earning someone's business. Uh, definitely did for me. And then, uh, you know, with no other information without being able to do more research on the company and the products they use, I, uh, I really couldn't see going any further with that, especially since I was so far down the road with Tesla. So um, very unfortunate. And then uh, by the company, not again, not showing the range of products they offer the sales process, it just kind of sputtered out. So that that was uh, the last con for this company. However, I've heard great things about this company. If you are a DIY person, if you think that you can actually get something like this off the ground and you can do this, I I definitely don't disagree with uh, DIY stuff. I am a DIY channel. Um, you know, I do DIY myself. I do professional uh, uh, review, uh, reviews of professional installs and uh, so on and so forth. So if you are interested in the company, uh, the link is up there under the Solar Wholesale banner there. You can go ahead and check them out. I uh, would recommend doing so. 
So now let's get into the install of Tesla Energy. All right, and here you can see my home after everything has been installed. I did try setting up cameras of the, the day of install. The Tesla people really didn't seem too keen. They didn't come out and say it, but I mean, if, if I was to take a hint, basically the cameras went away. I, I did try even coming out at one point, look, you can actually see this picture in the back. Actually, before this picture was taken, um, this is after, right after they installed, and I tried taking a picture of them on the roof. They told me, they, they asked me politely if I could just mind the cones and due to safety concerns, they didn't really want me outside my house. And it was something that they took very seriously. So I respected that and I went back in my home. Of course, this is it. It looks great after the install. There is some space on here, I feel like. And again, I, I feel like they could have readjusted these and I could have got, you know, 24 panels on the back or 23 panels on the back, even with this trim system. And then of course uh, we had to go to the front here and this was my earlier frustration is look at all this sun at the end of the day if they had just if the engineers had listened and did you know like one two three you know or one two three one two <laughs> you know I, I just feel like i would have been gotten a lot more energy out of that and had they listened you know i'm again with the panel I want I want functionality. I want the the most amount of power that I could possibly get if I'm going to go with the panel. And even then, it's just like, all right, well, keep these ones here, but just add two more to the project or three more to the project, and I'll pay for it. They they didn't seem too keen on that. And then of course down here we have my three power walls uh, installed in a great spot, the spot that I wanted. But at the same time, the lights are only on one side and they're on the side against the wall. So you can imagine if those lights start blinking with error codes the trouble i'm going to have reading them <laughs> so uh, one of the things that tesla could do with this is just add a fiber optic glass plate where one set of lights actually lights the whole thing on uh, right and left and then they probably wouldn't have to deal with that um something down the road uh, for future products and here we're going to go over this is just my home screen of my power generation now for some reason i do get better power generation on partly cloudy days so this is actually during one of the hottest uh, this is a i think it was 95 or 96 degrees for some reason on those days and i, I think we all know it is basically if the panels get too hot it does affect how much power they generate this is in direct sunlight i'm only producing 4.7 kilowatts at um, noon so this this was kind of a bummer and this you can see I'm, I'm actually prioritizing charging my my power walls this is in uh, backup mode I'll show you so here we have a screen record so there it is powering everything up I go back to my home screen we can see that my power walls are charging we're gonna go into the um, customize here and uh, here you have backup only self-powered advanced and stormwatch stormwatch doesn't seem to activate like I would like it to and then you got your vehicle charging. So back to Stormwatch. Stormwatch is something that Tesla will activate. It's something that I wish I could toggle. I also wish that I could um, charge my batteries independently from the grid. They say it will do this uh, with Stormwatch. Now going in here, you can see that I've switched the modes to self-powered and it is powering my home while it also charges my batteries. At 3.5 kilowatts to four kilowatts, I see a 1% jump every 10 to 15 minutes you know it, it does take some time to charge them back up and then of course this is back to backup only mode 4.7 kilowatts going directly to that battery and then of course the 1.1 from the grid here's a nice graph of telling you my usage versus when i'm discharging or recharging actually my discharge versus my recharge grid use and then my solar generation nice little bell curve here uh, and then up there it shows you everything that you've either consumed or are consuming that's the home right there of, of what it's been using throughout the day so this is a really easy to use graph that I really like using and then on top of this if you don't like this you scroll down you know I've used 19.3 kilowatts I've generated and then of course to the power wall as opposed to from the power wall and then of course from the grid as opposed to to the grid that's for the whole day so this is a backup event so that's if you actually do lose grid power and it does have to go solely off the power wall it, they do monitor that pretty closely because you can run out of juice and then you you actually do lose power so next we have here uh we're going to go into all the like the impacts the day the week the year so this is kind of expands upon the graph that i was talking about earlier um you can do the week the month and it's going to show you your energy offset versus um your usage 
and then of course this is all useful information uh, what I found that I did is I just tried to be more efficient with everything even my wife was going around shutting off ACs and and power because she wanted to basically see how low we could go and that's something my wife typically didn't care about until we got solar panels so that was pretty interesting to see but it does force you a little bit to be a little bit more efficient that is the uh, the outcome or the install of the Tesla solar panels as you can see I've also stopped by their apparel shop um, I do like the shirts they're kind of like a uh, exercising shirt they're made of a material that breathes, breathes really well it's kind of like those um, compression shirts only looser and then uh, also the Tesla cap you, you probably know that I like the 5.11 tactical caps these ones are comparable I really hate those like banner signs where it like pushes it up I hate the snapbacks um, this has a loop in the back not the velcro like I like but it is a nice replacement to the hats that I have Guys, I love making these videos, so if there's anything that you could do to help the channel right now, it would be to like, share, and subscribe. We are trying to get our subscribers up to 500 subscribers. That way we can go back to Amazon Affiliates. We had a desk project that was going in the works. Everything's fallen through, and then, of course, this other stuff was stuff we had already allotted. I'm just kind of able to make videos on that stuff that we've already kind of, you know, had in the, in the works already. <clears throat> you know, I try to always make something out of nothing. So if there's anything you can do, like, share, and subscribe. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Tell me what you think.